Okay, so again, uh, let me remind you, we, we do the, the formal inversion. So we have uh, a guy here, uh, a formal power series, and a formal power series on, uh, on n methods. And uh, the derivative will be an n by n matrix. And of course, if, the, if my guy will be invertible for composition, then it will be uh, an invertible uh, linear. Uh, <coughs> And the morphism of uh, Km, and uh, the claim is that this is if and only if. Uh, this is uh, rather easy. In any case, uh, I will explain it. And uh, the, the reduction, uh, uh, we have two reductions. Uh, one of them, uh, I want to, uh, to claim that it is enough, this is obvious, enough to assume uh, this, this guy is G. Uh, DG is actually the identity matrix. Again, I am. Right? By composing a, a, a actual linear operator of KM is always a, a, such a guy. And uh, so I can always compose and, and get uh, and, and fix the derivative of uh, if the identity is invertible. Uh, also, uh, enough to prove. that our G is left in that uh, Because if GF, uh, G composing, right, is the identity, uh, then uh, D of F is again invertible or if we already assume B. This is again the identity, and this means that F is left in the world. I mean, if I do prove this statement for every G, then the left inverse of G, F, will be left in the world as well. Uh, and this means that F, H, and of course, this means that. H is G and F is right inverse as well for uh, G and that's right. So this is what we have. So I'm, 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 I'm proving under this reduction. We assume DG is I am and argue. of n as above. Um, no. So let me write this down. So what do we know? We know that uh, G has no constant terms and the linear approximation of G is trivial. So this means uh, that I can write down G as, as follows, or maybe GI, G as n components. The GI will have no uh, constant term, and, uh, and uh, <coughs> the first, uh, uh, the linear term of it will be just uh, XI itself, and uh, then, um, well, I choose now to uh, denote the rest by minus hi, where, uh, where hi is something with only degree two and higher terms. Uh, so hi is of the following, of the form, beta i, x to the beta, uh, Beta, such as the degree of beta, is to it higher. Okay, well, here I'm just introducing notation, and uh, and we want uh, the i composed f i. We want it to be uh, the 
identity, oh, sorry, GI compose F. Right. Uh, so this should be the i uh, term of the identity. This should be xi. And of course, this should be xi compose F. It's just fi minus 8i. So I guess uh, this formula is equivalent to G composite in the area. It's another way to write down what we want is this uh, N equation that I see here. Let's write it. Um, so, Fi here is uh, Xi plus Hif. And now I need to solve it. satisfy this equation, uh, so if some choice, I, I want to choose inductively the A alpha, and I claim that I can do this, so uh, A E i, what should it be? Okay, I, my, my question is, I want to make this, I want to choose a alpha such that this correct, well, correct this equation, where the C gammas are, I guess, understood from my notation, the, the way I used this, this notation previously, the C gammas are those which I get by uh, composing this and that. A J S and the beta uh, of these, and F as A, etc. Okay. More clear? So, here the degree of gammas, of course, is is two and higher, so what is this? Just, uh, delta e, e. So uh, A E I is actually A E one. A E J is delta I J, okay. And uh, and we can we don't worry about convergence, right? We can choose uh, A alpha inductively. Uh, the claim is that when I assume I choose uh, all the a al all, all the a alpha primes smaller than alpha, um, when I write down the form formula for a alpha, I'm getting well I, I don't I know this term for alpha bigger than two, degree bigger than two, and I, I just see here uh, in the composition uh, in the formula of the composition terms which involve only uh, alpha prime for smaller primes is it because because of what? Because this assumption, right? When I always, uh, well, I don't want to write down the formula again, uh, but uh, I, I want to ask to observe that uh, here, all the terms that appears for the H i as uh, some uh, monomial of degree uh, two and higher, so I get, uh, I guess, pin. Um, so. I did prove or at least explain uh, this piece, but I did explain a bit more and I want to emphasize it. So this inductive formula that I'm um, having now, uh, it's also, it shows also a uniqueness. Uh, I think the uniqueness uh, of the index element uh, in my model is kind of clear. 
but also it follows. And um, um, also, I, I want to I want to make uh, so the proof is done, but uh, I want to make a whole life of the proof. I didn't bad to formulate uh, before, but I want to observe now because it is very useful. So the fact that I can write the C, C gammas as polynomials in A alphas and B betas, uh, and the and the alphas are of a smaller degree, so I already have formula for those. I can substitute this formula inside, and by induction, I can get the C gamma uh, to be dependent only on the B betas, right? By uh, successive substitutions of polynomials in polynomials. And here, when doing this, this is just substituting substitute, substituting polynomials. Uh, no, nothing sense is going on. And um, given uh, the coefficients, uh, A alpha are given as polynomials. These are some universal again. It's just about the combinatorics of the nature of the combinatorial mm -hmm. nature of this process. Uh, polynomials uh, with uh, positive integer in the B betas. And again, finitely many uh, B betas for each alpha. So I'm just combining all these observations that we had uh, before together, and then this is very important, but of course, this depends on this expression. I, I choose the minus sign here exactly for that, to have the positiveness there. So again, the coefficients of the C gamma as polynomials in the A alpha and B beta are integer positive ones. And when I write it down, and I'm taking the A alpha that I see there, and substitute uh, instead of them, the C gamma should be the same as the A gamma, right? This is the thing here. Uh, when I substitute uh, to get uh, less dependence on the A alpha, or dependence on smaller and smaller alpha, I'm start substituting polynomials with integer positive coefficients within polynomials with positive integer coefficients, and this, and this goes by uh, induction. They are all uh, these forms. Clear? Excellent. Uh, so maybe... Maybe I'll, I'll give it I'll write it explicitly. Some, I, I want to record it without uh, keeping the, the proof on the board. The, the, the existence of the Q alpha is what matters here.
die? on the right side in I? J is less than I or something? Oh, sorry. No, no. So it was... <laughs> no, the, the QI depends on I. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, when you compute... Uh, when you compute... Uh, uh, no, it depends on I, for example, in the, in the entire J. I guess I, I didn't try the I here at all. Uh, yeah, it's, no, it's, 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 it's Delta IJ. Let's say it doesn't matter the, the, way, the way I'm using the notation. There are some ideas behind it, and this is not one of them. Uh, <laughs> put on the board is that uh, uh, the actual forms of Q's I is not. Oh, maybe we will do, but uh, it's not something that I would like to write down. By no means. And, uh, but the existence is nice to have. And our next chapter is the inverse function theorem. Now I want to spice it up with the noises. Okay, so if I will have this, then obviously I have the local version. 
which is what one needs in order to, to prove the classical uh, in the sun criterion. So, Local analytic isomorphism. I guess I didn't use this expression yet, but uh, it's obvious. Then there is a neighborhood of x, a neighborhood of x, smaller polynist, uh, smaller neighborhoods, whatever, uh, which are actually isomorphic, analytically isomorphic. So there is phi from that neighborhood to this neighborhood as an inverse phi minus prime from this neighborhood. <clears throat> Shall we write it down? So uh, clearly, uh, so I need to, to prove either of those. Uh, now, here for the only time I will use a Stokowski theorem, and I will give different proofs for for all different fields, and. Um, I want to say that there, there is uh, a unified proof by Toshima duration. It's, it's a bit harder, more technical, more cumbersome to write down. And the proof now is very easy, knowing what we know. So uh, if I do uh, the separation, so I, I will be lazy and do it. So uh, what shall I do? Maybe I'll, I'll say it. it. It is very easy once you say it. And, um, so the thing is that uh, I have this guy. 
of g, which I want to invert. And, uh, and again, I, I, I may assume that, uh, so I do know what the inverse of f is, right? This is given. Uh, I just want to, to, to show convergence of this then. Assuming the convergence of f. Uh, but of course, I can, I can change coordinate and torture f just a bit. Uh, for example, I can uh, stretch or, uh, uh, I mean, I can compose f with any other guy which I know to be uh, invertible prior to, to this. And uh, so by composing, I don't know, uh, f with something of the form uh, not alpha, I mean, maybe t, uh, x1, t, x2, t, x, n, and then do f, I can, I mean, I can change parameters uh, in such a way, uh, so I can, uh, to remember that uh, f converges some a alpha x alpha if and only if I have uh, the system m such that all the The alpha are alpha less than m, right? Uh, so what, what, I'm, what I want to say is that by uh, stretching here, I can uh, inflate or deflate the, the coefficients a alpha, and I can assume then that uh, the absolute values of all these uh, coefficients is less than one. Fair. Um, Oh, sorry. So, by stretching, I guess I can assume that the absolute value of all the coefficients, if I replace x to, should it be xi, xi mod over ri, or times ri, I guess I can assume, I can replace this equation, the equation, all the a alpha in absolute value are less than a. This is what I want. Okay. And now, of course, I can uh, take the product of my functions f by a scalar and set this m to be 1. So this is what I want to say. By this, I may assume, in order to solve the problem, that all the coefficients are actually in O, in the ring O. Okay, and now I want to invert, but I say that the formula for the inverse is actually should have used g instead of f. In any case, the, the formula of the inverse is given by applying some polynomial with integer values, with integer coefficients. So the, the result of this uh, polynomial is, is still in O. So I'm getting that the formal inverse of my guy G is in uh, O X and converges by this amount that we said uh, before, or by this. <coughs> Same formula that you see over here. Okay, so I guess I said it all. I just want to uh, write it down in, uh, in a reasonable uh, form on the board. So the, I, I'm going to use this term over here, but I'm about to erase it right now. So I'm just summarizing now for the history and uh, what I said. So I started by assuming k is non-primitious by a simple change of value. By normalizing uh, 
chasse is our first generality. The result is that F inverse convergent in, in the one quality, so of course this is a lie to say that the inverse of the original F is converging in that quality. This is up to this normalization that we form. Uh, am, am, am I being clear? Okay, so if if the original F eyes have the same polydisc of convergence. Sorry? If each of the F i share the same polydisc of convergence, then it seems that the f minus 1 has the exact same polydisc of right. convergence. Right, yes, it is correct. In fact, it's the same polydisc of convergence. But it's not true in general. I mean, if all the fi's didn't have this... So, uh, I, I need the minimal... Uh, the minimal? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, so, I did prove that one, but I did it only for non-archimedian fields <coughs> so far. And as you see, the, the, the proof is really very, very simple. Now we still have to do it uh, for uh, Archimedean fields, which is R or C. I'll do it again now, but actually it will be uh, easier for me to prove that one. This is, for most of you, this is not, of course, the inverse function term that you know from calculus. Uh, because most of you, I guess, in calculus class, you didn't care about the analytic, analytic of functions. It was just about uh, differentiability. But let me uh, remind. In calculus, it's same. Uh, we think that uh, okay. u and v in R and open uh, f from u to v f x well, x was f x yeah. and uh, df at x is in here and R, then uh, F as a, well, F is what? Uh, F uh, is C1. Uh, as a local inverse, One means I have uh, uh, partial derivatives and they are continuous. And then, so this is a standard thing that you, you all know very well. And um, now we want to walk over C. Uh, here's another thing that you know over C. Over C, we also know. by a convergent power series if and only if that is holomorphic. Holomorphic means that uh, as uh, this is C 
So of course, if a function is analytic, is given by convergent power series complex numbers, then uh, one can form a, a differentiation under the summation sign and, uh, and get uh, this function is differentiable. So this function is holomorphic, but it, also, it goes the other way around as well. So if I have a function which is holomorphic, then I can present its values at every point by some uh, Cauchy integral of a uh, I guess we, we are trying to think about uh, uh, integration of uh, some curve around it, but it's also, it, it works for multivariate as well, so you have to uh, integrate over the surface of uh, some neighborhood. Uh, but, uh, and this integral is differentiable uh, infinitely many times, and eventually you can use it to show that uh, if the function is homomorphic, then it is analytic. So this is, this is the classical thing, which I, I don't want to repeat now. Um, I, I, I want to remind what this means, though, by the language of, uh, of real differentiable. So, uh, F, or maybe the point, like F is, maybe before the point, let me remind you, uh, that uh, what, is, what is CN? CN is as a, as a real vector space, R2n, right? Uh, so where, where comes the C structure over it? It's a C vector space. It means that I, I, I don't only have a real scalar multiplication, also I have multiplication by I. Because of course C is generated by the reals and I. Uh, and I is a, so I is a certain operator. <coughs> so, uh, under the identification C is R2, the standard identification, uh, I have the function I from R2 to R2, which is given, uh, its matrix form is 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Uh, many times this guy is called J, and uh, if I have uh, CN, R2 hand here, I can, I guess that I, uh, I can just take J to be a, a block of such guys. So I can, this is a block of 2 by 2, and I have uh, I here. Okay, and... So when is a, a linear transformation from a real linear transformation from Cn to Cn actually a complex linear transformation? When does it commute with all complex scalars? If and only if it commutes with that guy, with I. Uh, so, and then those who commute with that guy, of course, I can rearrange things and, uh, and write it in uh, blocks of n by n instead of uh, two by two, so I guess it's minus one, one, or I can rearrange it to be one minus one as I use it. So maybe this is my J. Uh, sorry for not being pedantic now about uh, all my stations, but... Uh, so what do you think? Mm. Saying that uh, up to some change of uh, the order of Hodinet, etc., uh, T inside MN and R2N uh, is complex if and only if TJ equal J. Uh, 
complex invertible, this is, this is the remark that actually I wanted to, it is important, invertible element or the complex, the complex endomorphisms which are invertibles as real ones Actually, in general, as complex ones. If I have a guy here which is in vertical and it's commutus J, then it's inverse commutus J as well. The group for such of such is called now. And uh, so where, where am I? Uh, okay, I just recalled what I wanted. Uh, no, so uh, recall what I want to uh, write now is that uh, what we have is an analog of the Cauchy Riemann equation. In, in, in dimension y, in n equals 1, this is Cauchy Riemann. Uh, recall that uh, f is homomorphic if and only if f is real differential, this is one, and dx commutes. With this chain, with I. <clears throat> okay, now I want you guys to combine these together, combine this and this is of observation, and observe that we actually know uh, the complex in this function theorem. If I have a, a function phi from u to v, which is complex analytic, then in particular, I can view these guys as uh, open set in R to N, and uh, my function is, is real C1, and the derivatives are always, uh, uh, derivatives are always real. And this means that, uh, okay, and, and then I do have an inverse locally, and the inverse of derivatives, which are just the inverse of those derivatives, and again, it's in this group, GLMC, so I can just go back over those lines and uh, to understand that this is holomorphic and it's analytic. So, uh, okay, so real functions, you just delete them as a IFT uh, follows uh, from k equals c by combining. I, I will not write down here. Combining the above. The observation below. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. What about the rays? So. The only remaining case is the real. And again, let me uh, write less and explain more. Uh, so now I have, uh, now I have uh, U and V are in RL, and this is uh, a real analytic guy. So again, by passing to coordinates, I, I, I may assume that, uh, it is given by converging formal uh, power series. And uh, and then I can just extend everything to the complex. I can just view it as a as a complex function from domains in C n to C n, uh, for which this uh, uh, formal powers 
series converges over the complex numbers, and I know that over there it is invertible by this part, and I know that the inverse is given by a formal power series for which the coefficients are given by as z-value polynomials over those real coefficients that I had before. So the inverse is defined over the reals, and it is converging because I just do it over C. So the same domain of convergence of sticking to the reals will do for that part. Uh, yeah, so I just have to write it down. Uh, for k is of k is R, we may assume p is some alpha. is invertible as a complex C form of our series with C converging inverse the coefficients of the inverse Polynomials being Z polynomials of the AI. Okay. Um, are, are there any questions? I guess this is a good time for. Uh, not really, you have complex in 10 minutes. Ah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so the are in 10 Okay. That's, uh, that's an excellent amount. <laughs> so again, I, I want. Uh, I mean, formally, uh, to, logically, this is a good time, right? But uh, you're right. So I want again to uh, to repeat what we did here. We proved the uh, uh, inverse function inverse function theorem. Uh, we did we did it by a, a case by case. Uh, Way we we assume and we did it for easily for non Archimedean fields and then we prove it for the Archimedean fields doing it which are C or R doing it for C separately using the uh, function theory over C and uh, for the real way extending the scalars to the complex and uh, I guess I, I'm not writing it down but uh, what we did here is is an obvious thing that we can do over and over again whenever we have analytic uh, space over manifold in minutes uh, over a field, we can define its continuation over a, a field extension. So this is something to keep in mind. Okay. So, so far for the local picture, and now I want to uh, start something new, which is analytic manifold. I was quite pedantic uh, previously, and I'm being less and less pedantic now because I'm, I'm, we're seeing more and more familiar ideas. So I want now to define analytic manifold. I don't want to give you uh, all the, the formal definitions, um, but maybe a chart uh, on a topological space. Uh, is 
local homeo with a policy. So uh, here is X, here is a uh, new quality disk, only here is called the M, here is quality disk, here is X, here is the disk, and you have, I want it to be a home and uh, I want to use charts in order to, uh, to build a manifold structure, K-analytic manifold structure on X. And again, I will not uh, write down all the words. I will use picture instead, as basically you know, I, I guess, what you're talking about. So I want to uh, define what an atlas is. We define an atlas. Given uh, a guy X, I want to define uh, a collection of charts, coordinate charts on X, and uh, whenever I have two, the intersection uh, defined for me identification or map from here to there, right? And what I want is this to be k analytic. So an atlas on my space X is a collection of charts such that uh, all the maps obtained this way will be analytic. And uh, an analytic manifold, right? a k analytic manifold, And of course, an atlas, <laughs> in order for a collection of, ch of charts to be an atlas, I, I want it to be uh, compatible in that way and define a pattern. A catalytic manifold is a house of space x with Okay, so intuitively this is what I, I do get by taking all these and glue them together in a kinetic way. Uh, if I have Y here and I mark fit here. I guess that um, I would say that phi is analytic if it is a continuous map between these two projection space x and y. And if I do have a this and that, this should be carried. The map where I'm restricting to a coordinate chart, or maybe when I compose it with a coordinate chart, and view it as a map into a coordinate chart, should form an analytic map between the two. Those, those things are KN, or maybe this is, this is a KN, this is a KN, I don't know. Okay, and this should be a analytic map between these two open sets in KN and KN, corresponding. So, uh, a morphism is of care and mindful. It's a continuous map. Okay. 
next thing I want to, uh, to say is, uh, is to define the notion of the tangent space uh, to, uh, at the point, the point analytic manifold. Uh, it is clear what do we mean when we say tangent space for an open uh, setting Kn. It, it is clear what we mean in, in, in uh, local neighborhoods, but I want uh, to, to make uh, some sort of a uniform construction. So there are various ways to do so. And probably again, those of you who took a uh, differential geometry knows it, uh, know how to define it, or whether took algebraic geometry. So I'll just repeat uh, the standard definition. So uh, we define I'll say and then write. I want to define a germ of functions at a point. So I want to identify two functions at, from a manifold given a manifold. Always carry x and x in x. We say that the two uh, <coughs> a function. Said to be equivalent if there is maybe a deeper, a smaller neighborhood of X. Germs, I can multiply germs, etc., and uh, the collection of germs at X form a ring under point-wise. So uh, we will discuss this OX after we uh, have some tea in a minute. 
and uh, I'll explain how to use it in order to uh, construct the tangent defined, the tangent space at x or bx. So let's take this break, but uh, I want to uh, finish the next class a bit earlier than usual because there is a math club afterwards.